everyone, thank you so much for watching Dates and Talks. I'm Shivani. Today is the third episode of Memoirs on Monday and for this episode, I want to recommend to you a book called Journal of Solitude by May Sarton. Before starting this video or talking about this book in general, I really want to emphasize the fact, give this book a read, it is well worth your time. And uh, if you are interested in reading themes, in reading about themes like loneliness, solitude, creativity, art, despair, etc., then I think you must pick this book up. The book is insightful and resonating and you will understand me when you pick this book up. Eleanor Mary Sarton was a Belgian-American poet, novelist, memoirist, who wrote under the pen name Mary Sarton. Despite the fact that her great work is personalized with erotic female imagery, she resisted the label of lesbian writers, preferring to convey the universality of human love. In her memoir, she talks about real life and that I also mentioned in the introduction part of this video. According to her, the real life is when is when a person feels or when, when the person observes the thing that happened in the past or is happening around it around it and when the observation is made she resists the interruption by anyone and when observations are made and with keen attention and then the revelation takes place in her memoir she talks about the inner world and outer world and she has beautifully encapsulated both the things very well and made everyone understand that according to her the inner world is when the person faces the the life's adversities and facing challenges and fighting from them and learning things as well in her book she talks about the value of solitude as a and she considers solitude as the seedbed of self-discovery and she goes like the value of solitude, one of its value is of course that there is nothing to cushion against attacks from within just as there is nothing to help balance at times of particular stress or depression. A few moments of desultory conversation may calm an inner storm but the storm painful as it is might have had some truth in it. So sometimes one has simply to endure a period of depression for what it may hold of illumination if one can live through it, attentive to what it exposes or demands. In the outer world, she talks about the surrounding, the uh, garden, the flowers, the nature basically. And she has made very good observations, uh, you know, uh, observations on flowers and the teachings of flowers and why, uh, what the flowers basically teach. The reality of life to her and uh, how it actually shows the reality of life when i'm alone the flowers are rarely seen i can pay attention to them they are felt as presences without them i would die why do i say that partially because they change before my eyes they live and die in a few days they keep me closely in touch with the process growth and also with dying i am floated on their moments the ambience here is, is order and beauty this is what frightens me when i am first alone again i feel inadequate also in her memoir she talks about her daily rhythm and why is it important to maintain um, a routine and why is it important to keep doing things on daily basis to keep going uh, when you are not feeling uh, when you are not feeling like going so she talks about that as well she also talks about the um, meeting with a few animal creatures cat especially and she also talks about the relationships with her friends with a uh, few people as well with her friends and uh, many writers and her favorite writers as well in the book she mentions various various uh, quotes in the book and various um, quotations from those works as well in her memoir in her memoir she also talks about um, her understanding in relation to hope patience um, uh, creativity um, acceptance and lots more according to her creativity um, comes when person feel feels tension and how does tension creates a form of artistic or creative energy in oneself and she talks about that as well I want to read out that quote to you as well Humphrey Trevelyan on Geet, it seems that two qualities are necessary if a great artist is to remain creative to the end of a long life. He must on the one hand retain an abnormally 
keen awareness of life he must never grow complacent he never be content with life must always demand the impossible and when he cannot have it must despair the burden of the mystery must be with him day and night he must be shaken by the naked truths that will not be comforted this divine discontent this disequilibrium this state of inattention is a source of artistic life in her book she also talks about despair and she has beautifully quoted that as well and i really want that to share that quote with you and i think you must read this one does anything in nature despair except man an animal with a foot caught in a trap does not seem to despair it is too busy trying to survive it is all closed in to a kind of still intense waiting is this a key keep busy with survival imitate the trees learn to lose in order to recover and remember that nothing stays the same for long not even pain psychic pain sit it out let it all pass let it all, go that was all i had to share about this book this book is very much insightful i'm seeing again and again and i really find this and i hope uh, you find the same you will if you read this book please let me know in the comment section i don't know how to end this video but i just want to say uh, the ending way uh, i just want to end this video by saying just give this book a read if you are interested in reading such themes because i find i personally find this book very much nice and very much insightful and i really enjoyed reading this book and if you pick this book up then please let me know in the comment section and thank you so much for watching this video